Hey, Chris Lipe here with The Recording Revolution. Exporting tracks from DAW to DAW. Oh my, is there lots to consider and think about, especially as you start using lots of different types of DAWs. Because they all have their certain way that they like you to follow to get tracks out so that you can work with them in a different DAW. And some DAWs make it really, really difficult. It's like they want to keep you trapped inside that DAW and not have you work in another DAW or not have someone help you in another DAW. Well, I happen to use two primary DAWs. I use Pro Tools a lot and I use Logic a lot. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take raw tracks from one DAW to the other. And what you should know is that the things that I'm going to show you here are more of, hey, make sure you do this and don't do this, regardless of what DAW you're using. When we are prepping files, or, and I say files purposefully, when we're prepping files to deliver to a different DAW, there's things we absolutely want to do, and then there's things we absolutely do not want to do. And so even though I'm only going to be working with Pro Tools and Logic, think to yourself, if you're using Studio One, if you're using GarageBand, or if you're using Ableton, or Cubase, whatever, make sure that you are doing some of the things, or all the things I tell you to do, and make sure that you're not doing all the things I'm telling you not to do. Otherwise, you're going to get really bad, poor quality results, and unexpected things are going to happen when you open your files or when someone else opens your files in a different DOS. So hopefully this is helpful and clears a lot of things up as to exactly what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. If you'd like more help with your own recordings, especially the creative process, click the link below and join my free recording course. I'll take you through how to use basic in the box stuff to create great music. We have a session that I'm in the middle of working on. We just tracked drums for this a few days ago, and I've cleaned up the drums uh, a little bit and done some initial mixing in Pro Tools, but I want to get them to Logic uh, because oftentimes I like to do things from an arranging standpoint in Logic, and then sometimes I'll go back to Pro Tools for vocals. But also... Uh, a lot of times I'll be working in Logic and just want to go over to Pro Tools to finish vocals. Or maybe I'll be working in one of these DAWs and then send it to someone else who's using something else. So here's the drums, or a portion of them, just so you can hear them. Got some tom rings in there and stuff like that. But these, these are the edited drums. But I'm going to go back and show you the unedited just to make a point, this is kind of where they were a little while ago. The first thing we need to do when we are prepping files is we need to create zero start time files. Okay? This is different in every DAW in terms of how you do this, but we want to select the whole, and I've got these grouped. We want to select all the files in the timeline so that they all start and preferably end, but they don't have to end at the same time, but they do have to start at the same time. And then when we want to create a a file that is a single file, because all of these are different files. So if we try to export all of these files without first consolidating them and creating one file with no seams, it's going to be almost impossible with how many edits we have here to bring it into another DAW. So what that looks like in Pro Tools is we select the timeline, uh, and then we go up to Edit, Consolidate Clip. Okay. And you can see it's rendering each one of these files and creating that. Okay, But I've already done this on the other playlist. I might want to mess with those a little bit later, so we're going to go back to playlist 8. I've already done that. Now here's where a lot of people sort of misunderstand the process of getting files out of a DAW. I do not, let's say I want all of these to be separate, so I can pull in the kick, pull in the snare, pull in the tom, uh, in, in, in another DAW. I do not want to select here and then solo it, and then bounce. I don't want to do that, unless my DAW has no other option. But most DAWs do. GarageBand, I don't think, does. Uh, but what, if I do this, 
I am writing the plugin setting and any bus settings, if, any routing stuff, and any last minute sort of hack, you know, pre mastering sorts of things. I'm writing all that to the file, which is going to be done in the other DAW or. I just want the raw track. I don't want any of that processing because someone else is going to mix it or whatever. You want to make sure you're just giving them the file. Now you could say, well, I'm just going to bypass my reverbs and, and just do it that way. Ah, but what about still your bus setting? Well, okay, I'll just bypass that. Oh, well, what about all the reverbs that you have going on? Well, I'm just going to bypass all of that and bounce. Fine. If your DAW has no other option, then I guess you have to do that. Just make sure that your fader is up at zero and you are bouncing one track at a time and they all start and end at the same time. But there is always, well, almost always, if you're working with most DAWs, a better way to do this. You can leave all this the same so you can come back and have your settings in this DAW the way you want them. And then you're just going to select the whole file. And you, in, in Pro Tools, you can select all of the files that you want to export at once, once there's zero start time. And you can, in Pro Tools, it's over here, I'm going to export clips as files. See this? And when I do this, I want to make sure that I'm exporting the, the native bit depth of the session. Okay, so I don't necessarily need to change my sample rate. This is what it was recorded at. Let's just leave it there. I want to make sure my, my bit depth is the same as the actual session. But here's where a lot of DAWs, I don't know why they haven't figured this out yet, but I'm selecting here mostly mono files. And even these files right here are, are mono files. They're just on a stereo track. I don't want to export them as interleaved. The interleaved is another word for stereo. I want to export them as multiple mono. That is what I want. If I export them as interleaved, then Logic is going to do this thing where it, it tries to put a bunch of things on stereo tracks that aren't actually stereo files. This is a mono file. Now, if I bounce it with all the effects on there, I'm going to need a stereo file to represent the reverbs. But again, I don't want reverb to be a part of this. I want reverb to come after the file. The other thing that I want to make sure and do is I want to make sure that all my file names are uniform. That's going to make things a lot easier. So we're just going to go kick, snare, rack, tom, wave is fine. And I'm going to choose somewhere that's not just in the glut of audio files that I have over here. I'm going to choose a specific folder, my desktop for now, and I'll create a new folder. Drums for Logic, Create, Go. My tempo is 118 beats per minute, and I'm going to enter that manually in Logic. Now I've already got a, a template, Logic template set up that has my drums in place. So now that I've exported just the files, I can go over to my desktop, and I can take all of these and just import them. I can drag them in and make sure that they're all lined up. Notice I have my tempo set up. This is the cleanest way to do it. So we're gonna go kick, just drag this in, worry about getting them all lined up here in a second. There it is, okay? And then the next is snare. If I drag them all in, it uh, sometimes tends to make additional tracks, but I already have my tracks made. Snare. Uh, we'll go uh, Rack Tom. Now see, it did rooms left and right. We'll go Floor Tom. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go overheads left and right and drag them in like this. See? It automatically knew what to do. And then rooms. Now, because I have a template already set up, this is going to sound pretty good. Um, I already have the plugins on each track that I want to use. It'll sweeten the drums here and there. 
Uh, this is great. So if I just play a little bit of this. Not exactly the same. I don't have the same reverbs and stuff, but it's it's good enough. And it's it's all in time and works great. Now, if I had bounced on the track level, I would have been subject to wherever my fader was, wherever my pan knob was, and whatever effects were on there. And so when I would import them into here, I'm getting double effects. I'm getting double gain staging. I'm getting all sorts of things that are just going to be so wonky. Okay? Now... Let's pretend that what I have here, I want to get back into a different DAW. Logic is more difficult, as are other DAWs, when it comes to exporting things. But all the DAWs are getting a little better. The main things you want to realize are, are you exporting the file or are you exporting the track? We want to be exporting the file. So I put in file breaks here to show that this is how, if I'd recorded them here, this is more like how they would look. We want to make sure that we're not just exporting here because then we're exporting this file, this file, this file, this file, and then some poor guy has to line them all up or just ask you to do it right. Now, the equivalent of consolidating clips in Logic is joining regions per track. And I have that so assigned to the same key command as I do in Pro Tools. For me, that's shift option three. And then it says non-contiguous audio, audio regions require the creation of an audio file. That's fine. It's making a new audio file for me. But watch what happens. Unlike in Pro Tools, I can't, I, if I just select all those regions, it doesn't make a zero start time. So, bummer. What I have to do instead is I have to select the timeline like this all the way to the beginning and then do it. Create. There. You also want to make sure in Logic, I'm going to go to my key commands real quick. There it is. Join region per tracks. You want to make sure that it's per tracks and you want to fill cell, you want to make sure you're doing this. If you don't have it as per tracks, what it tends to do is it tends to bounce down all these and like merge across tracks, uh, which, which we don't want. So I left this little thing here, so I'm going to select like this. Now I can select multiple ones like this, and I can go create, and you'll notice it'll bounce the regions, and it'll do the other one. This is what we want. And I need to do this one as well. And I, the reason it's leaving this out here is because I'm selecting it a little bit further out. But it doesn't matter where they end. It just matters where they start. Okay, we'll do one more. Now... This you, you're going to want to watch for this in your DAW. I've got all these down. I'm just going to get rid of these. I don't really care about those. We're going to select these, and then we're going to export as audio files. Again, I'm not bouncing. If I bounce, I'm going to get this one panned over. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to normal or zero out everything in order to make those right. I'm also going to have to mute all my effects and everything. So just go here. Uh, export audio, export as audio files, okay? I usually leave this on overload protection only when I'm exporting from Logic, and you want to leave this trim silence at file end. That's fine. We are selecting the, the files themselves, so it's a, their, their verbiage is a bit confusing here, so you don't really know what you're getting, and I'll show you. Now I'm here in Pro Tools again without a template for the drums, and I'm going to drag these in, and it's going to automatically create uh, tracks for these. So you bring them in like this. You can line them up later. I do have my tempo already set up, so if I go to the se session start time, I should be good. And then you can see here, it exported the ones that it converted to stereo as stereo tracks. That's fine. It works great. Uh, and you can see that I have all the dynamics the way that they need to be. They look the same, 
as they did coming from Pro Tools to Logic and then back from Logic to Pro Tools. This is because I exported the raw recorded tracks. Only the things that came in on the input. They're raw. And I'm free to then mix and massage with various EQs and compressors and do what I want to do. I hope this was helpful for you. Like I said, lots of DAWs do it in different ways, but the functionalities are basically there. You just want to make sure that you're, you're doing it in a way that gives the mix engineer or your collaborator the most freedom. And that is don't print the plugins. Don't bounce the tracks. The, the one exception to this is if you've got guitar tones or something that you really want to go with and your mix engineer doesn't have those or you don't want him to have to try to get the settings or whatever. And this is totally understandable. This can happen because we're using so many virtual amps. So what you want to do here is you do want to bounce that track uh, at, from a zero start, from start to finish. Uh, so it's the same length as the other ones. But then give your mix engineer, whoever it is, the raw file, the direct signal as well so that they can work with both. Don't just give them the printed one. They'll likely use a little bit of both. And there's other scenarios like that too. And for MIDI, I always ask for the raw MIDI file and a, a uh, bounced version with the virtual instrument that they used for reference. That way, I can go back to exactly the sound that they had when they were working with things, and maybe I'll have the same sound or similar, but I have the freedom to go back and work with the MIDI as well. All right. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, if you want more help with the creative side of your recording, click that link below and join my free recording course. We'll see you for more.